Hey guys, um, last time we talked about low symmetry point groups and we talked about the C and D family point groups. So now we're going to talk about high symmetry point groups. And these are really easy to pick. You have TD, which is a tetrahedral group. Stuff like methane is in that, or ammonium. And um, then you have the octahedral point group. And that one's pretty easy to pick also. It's uh, basically if you have an octahedral molecule, all the ligands are the same on the metal or um, something like that. And these are very easy to recognize right away. So what you want to do is you want to be able to recognize OH, which is just a plain octahedral molecule with all the ligands. And you want to be able to recognize TD right away, which is just a plain um, tetrahedral molecule with all the same ligands. So, I would recommend remembering that. So, again, just to recap. So, you know what I'm talking about. That's TD. And something like this. This is just an octahedral. There are also higher um, symmetry point groups. There's the IH, which is for icosahedral structures. But honestly, I've never had to even deal with one of those. So pretty much these are going to be the high symmetry ones you're going to encounter. And um, another of the ones that you'll very commonly encounter are linear molecules. So I believe I already talked about these maybe in the first or second video. Um, linear molecules, they either belong to one of two point groups. There's the C infinity H and the D infinity H. Now remember this C, this has one rotation axis. And then the D has two axes. So um, I think the example I used last time was N2. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong one. N2 is down here because it has two rotation axes. And there's infinite rotation if you go straight down the two ends in the triple bond. But you've got a C2 from this end. So obviously, um, the primary rotation axis is the uh, infinity <laughs> axis. So you call it D infinity H. And for the C ones, I think last time I used carbon dioxide is linear molecule and straight down here oh I'm sorry that's um let's use carbon monoxide <laughs> yeah carbon dioxide would be D infinity H as well there's your infinity axis and you don't have a rotation axis so it's just C and you only have one primary rotation axis. You have one rotation axis, period. So it's just C and infinity H here. Um, some more examples are, again, like I was saying before, carbon dioxide would be down here. Um, or something like H2. Because obviously you can flip it over, it's the same molecule. So, um, 
And then there are um, some things you got to remember. Just because a molecule is in a tetrahedral conformation, it does not mean that it is going to necessarily be in the TD point group. So let's take this molecule, for instance. Chloromethane. That is not in the TD point group because that chlorine right there breaks symmetry. What this is in, though, if we can figure this out, let's rotate this so the CL is straight back and then all of the H's are coming up towards us in the plane. You can see it does have a C3 axis right here. And also along that C3 axis you would have a reflection plane. So it's definitely at least C3V. It's not C3H because you don't have a perpendicular reflection plane. And unless you can find another symmetry, um, another rotation axis that I can't find, it's definitely not D3V or D3H. So this would be C3H, not. TD. So let's do the same thing with octahedral. Sometimes people get confused about this at first. Um, we have a metal. The top ligand is going to be H2O. And all these other ligands are going to be chlorine. chloride rather. Okay, so you can see that breaks TD symmetry because while you once had a um, a primary rotation axis that was C4, you still do you still do have a C4 rotation. But you don't have anything that runs perpendicular to that. So there's no rotation here. It's not going to work. Um, in fact, that's the only rotation axis now. So you've effectively put that into a C family point group. Um, does have a reflection plane. So if you looked right along this axis right here, let's go through these, all these chlorines. We'll go through that one, we'll go through the H2O, we'll go through that chlorine. You can see there's a reflection plane. And then of course, alternately, you'd have one coming back this way. Um, um, go through like that. So it goes through that one, that one, that one that one and then of course to the metal so you do have that so that's gonna put that down in the C4V point group it is no longer in the in the TD because it doesn't have any perpendicular symmetry rotations um, so next time I'm gonna start talking about how you can use a uh, flowchart to pick these but we're gonna try to get away from the flowchart because on an exam you're not gonna have the flowchart so alright see you guys next time